Believe it or not, three years ago today, two idiots with a stupid little idea started this little channel called Gaming Off The Grid. Today is our three year anniversary and we're gonna answer a bunch of questions from you, the viewer. What are we drinking? Today we're today? drinking the barrel aged four year anniversary stout by Barntown. This is an imperial pastry stout brewed with vanilla sheet cake, vanilla beans, and cacao nibs aged for one year in Heaven Hill bourbon barrels. Ah, uh, uh, wow. okay. Let's do this thing. You know the drill, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss one of our bi-weekly uploads and sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to. And thanks for all the support over the last three years. Let's jump into this Q&A. You wanna know about beer, wrestling games, or gaming? You've got to check out Gaming Off The Grid. It's been a crazy three years, man. Wow. It's went by like that. But if you think back to it, it's like, man, we have been doing this for a while. It's insane, but dude. Almost 400 episodes, yeah. 150 live streams. Yeah, and it like really feels like the channel's just started getting traction in like the last six months. It has so. like a heartbeat, dude. But nonetheless, uh, we want to do this Q&A because we did one of these, was it a year ago? A year ago, and there's a lot of new people, uh, subscribers and, and folks that hang out in live streams and stuff that might want to know a little bit more about us. So we got the old trusty laptop out. Now we're just going to go through these things. Uh, the questions came in over the YouTube community tab over the last week or so. Yep. So we're just going to start right away. Uh, Ziggy7800 Pro asks, how did you guys meet and why did you start a YouTube channel? Glad you did. It is great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ziggy. Um, we you met, tell them how we, we met? We met through Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's a true story. Tinder. Oh, I, I wish it was Tinder. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, no, I joined the band. They were looking for a bass player. Yeah. And I saw an ad on Facebook for a bass player opening, and now we have a YouTube channel. Yeah, was that like was that about four years ago? That was about four or five. Four or five. I yeah, think. it's crazy. So then, uh, yeah, uh, uh, why did you start a YouTube channel? Um, Robert's got some extensive uh, video background, and it yep. just kind of happened one night. We were waiting to do some uh, final listens on the the final masters of an, of an album we were working on, and the other two guys were late. So of course they were. I had built this game room or some version of what you kind of see now. It's obviously expanded. But we played House of the Dead Overkill together. And we beat it. Yeah, and, and we were like, dude, this is awesome. We were drinking some beers yeah. and uh, playing House of the Dead Overkill. And it was a couple days later, it was kind of like, dude, that was a lot of fun. And I think maybe people miss that couch playing co -op. with friends and yeah. things like that. So that it is kind of uh, just started. Kind of how it was born. I think that maybe happened in like a December ish range and we were uh, off and running. We had brainstormed, blah, blah, blah. But getting probably too far into it. But anyway, hopefully that answers your question. Steve Newsom asks, what are your predictions for retro game prices in the next two years? A lot of prices were dropping pre pandemic and now prices have really gone crazy. I know it's speculative, but I just was curious about your thoughts. Thank you for the awesome content and happy birthday. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Uh, that's a, it's, you never know because. Like right now, like the Wii and the PS3 super hot, and I never would have guessed that the Wii, because there's so much, so much stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I have noticed that like NES and stuff has kind of dropped a little bit. Yeah. I think the Wii U. I know we keep talking about it, but I think the Wii U market's gonna just keep going like this. Yeah, I think the PS3 is gonna be hot. Yeah. I think you will. To your point, I think that 8-bit, 16-bit era stuff will at least stabilize, if not start regressing a little bit. I honestly don't know when we're going to see a regression on the GameCube stuff. No, I it's, think that's going to keep being hot. It's so hot right now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see a major drop off. Um, I think things may, might settle a little bit, but I, I know things have risen because of the pandemic. But, um, you know, did that just set the bar for what's coming, You're, you know, in the future or will it regress? But anyway, I think certain things will drop off the older stuff. I yeah, think and I think start. the next generations that have disposable income, whatever they played when they were a kid is what's going to spike. You yeah. Know? They're like, oh, I remember playing that. Duco asks, what is your favorite digital only game? Which game series do you wish you could see a new entry in? Digital I, only game? I'm going to go with House of the Dead 4. 4. I was yeah. just going to say House of the Dead 4. NBA Jam on Fire Edition. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of... Stormfront, The Mutant War. Oh, we played that last night. Yeah. That game is so much fun. I think House of the Dead 4. Yeah. Fatal Frame made in a black hole. Oh, yes, the Wii because it's not... It's only digital in the yeah. United States. Yeah. A game series we want to see a new entry in, man. There's a lot. Uh, F-Zero, though, really comes to the front of my mind. Twisted Metal. Oh, that's We've a good We've talked pull. about Twisted Metal yeah. a lot because the last one was on the PS3, and that version is 
incredible. Mm -hmm. Neo Turbo Maniac asks, you guys are pretty damn big for three-year-olds. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, we took steroids. It's what it is. Uh, thinking about the comment from April 21 monthly recap, reviewing games that came out before you were born. Oh, my God. What's your opinion on consoles from the era, Atari era, 2600, 5200, television, ColecoVision, Vextrex, etc.? Thank you. Well, thanks for your question, Neo Turbo. Um, you know, we have a 2600 hooked up in here. When was the last time we turned it, it on? It's been a long time. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I like some of the arcade stuff from that era. Yeah. But I, I guess I just don't have... I don't have the nostalgia for it. ...burning desire. The... And I've played, you know, a lot of the games, you know, especially in, like, the Atari collections and stuff like that. And I, I don't know. It just doesn't really suit my fancy. Um, I, mean, I think they were important in the time. and like, Yeah. They were, they were what led the way for what we have now, but... I just don't know much about them, and obviously it was way before my time. And yeah. I've, I've dabbled here and there, and that's basically all my opinion on it. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but keep my mind preoccupied. Ask, do you guys occasionally throw down and absolutely destroy a big bowl of cereal? Cool. Kind of like a little snack cap before bed. If so, what cereals? Man, my favorite cereal, hands down, it has even been since I was a little kid, and it's weird that it was my favorite as a little kid, is Life. They're like little freaking milk pillows, man. You get them in as a there. Kid, you like oh, life. I loved it, dude. My grandma always had it. She had that in Cinnamon Life, which Cinnamon Life's good. But the OG Life, yes, I will freaking throw down and crush it before bed if I have it on hand. I try not having yeah. that stuff. If I buy it, I'm house. eating it, eating the entire box. Yeah, I love Frosted Flakes, dude. Frosted and I, Flakes are I so love good. milk too. Uh, my dad uh, worked at uh, Dairy um, in our area, still does actually, and so I grew up just ton of dairy products so i don't buy milk i try not to because i love it so much that i'll just freaking just freaking down it it's like a day and it's freaking gone same thing with cereal so what's your favorite cereal frosted flakes oh, okay frosted flakes um I, I used to as a kid i used to love cookie crisp but <laughs> going back into them i'm like why did i like this? i'd say my second favorite is cinnamon toast crunch i love well, i never i crunch. never really got into cinnamon toast crunch it's it's my my jam um how old were you when you had your first beer? Brandon uh, Melendez asks. Uh, I might surprise a lot of people with this one for me anyways. I'm anxious to hear your answer. Uh, I think I was 25. Because of some things in my, my past, my childhood, that type of thing, I was so laser focused in college to get through. I never partied. I never had a beer. Um, actually, my first beer was with one of my bosses that hired me in my first like professional job uh, somewhere down the line. Um, I was just so focused. I had a full-time job. I was uh, taking, uh, I double majored. I was so laser focused that it wasn't until I felt like I didn't have to rely on other people or, or go back to where I came from and that I was sustainable that I was like, okay, I let my hair down and have a few beers here and there. So it, 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 no good war stories coming from me. Uh, I think the first beer I had, I was in elementary school. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> nice. Um, I remember me and my buddy, it was a summer day and his parents were gone to work and his dad had beer in the fridge and we were like, hey, let's try one of these beers. I think it was probably like Keystone or something like that. And we we shared one. Oh, it's so bad. And then probably it was probably in high school that I actually was like, "Hey, this stuff can get me drunk." Yeah, you know, I like how this feels. I like getting drunk though. Yeah, Dad's and Last Gaming wants to know. Uh, um, he said the last three years have flown by. Lots of high points. What's the lowest point of the channel? I mean, I always think about, it, and I don't think it's online anymore. Our first, I think it was our first live stream where I got so hammed I passed out in my chair. When we were live. Do you remember that? <laughs> you fell asleep? I think I fell asleep. I think I do remember that. I mean, that doesn't get much lower than that. I usually am really good about keeping oh, it. Live stream? I yeah. forgot about that. But That's funny. I was just so happy about that day that we just kept freaking going at it. And uh, I remember the next day waking up, and I think I even sent you a text like, dude, that will never happen again. And it hasn't. But that was that was a low point. <laughs> I'll agree. That was, <laughs> but for me, that's a high point. That's hilarious. Um, and I forgot all about that. I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I don't feel good sometimes when I, like, really come down on a, uh, some dick smack that leaves a stupid comment. I need to rise above and not go there, but sometimes I just... Sometimes. Just, sometimes you just gotta. You just gotta. But, I mean, I, we never really got into a moment, I don't think collectively, correct me if I'm wrong, where, like, sub count views, things like that, ever got us down. We've always had our plan, and we're just committed to well, working also, our plan. Well, also, we're always... We're like, hey, what's the next video we got to work on? Yeah. We're never like, oh, we didn't hit this. Well, there's well, part of that. Quit. You know, what do they say in Idle Minds, the Devil's Workshop? We never give ourselves enough time to even fucking think, you know? Yeah. So it's like we don't have time to worry about how many people watch the last video because the next one's right on the freaking Bunsen burner ready to come out in science class. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Great question, dads and lads. Bart Headland asks, will you guys do an Xbox One buying guide? Not a lot of them on YouTube. You know, that would be a good one because we just got an Xbox One. And it yeah. would be coming from a perspective of low knowledge. We don't know a lot. Like, we know a ton about the PS4. But as far as Xbox One goes, we don't know a ton. We're just navigating I mean, those I think that would be a, that'd be actually a really good idea because a lot of the games are dirt cheap right now. Yeah, we've got a stack of bangers, and they're all thrift store games. We've yeah. never went and bought yeah, a and new game. Yeah, most of them are like a dollar. Yeah. Which is crazy because yeah. they were expensive a year ago. Yeah, you know I think our I mean? most expensive one, we got Halo 5 for three ninety nine. Yeah, that's awesome. But the rest of them are just freaking, and that one we're like, eh, should we? Kind of pricey. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but that may be coming down the pipe. We need to do a little more uh, homework on the console. Nathan Sales asks, what do you guys do for work outside of YouTube? Retail? I used to work retail. I used to work at a grocery store. Yeah. But not no more. Yeah. I'm a FedEx driver. Vroom, vroom. Yeah. So I deliver packages you, to you. You were an engineer before the pandemic. Yeah. And, and then, your business got shut down. Yeah, we got closed. Yeah. So now I just drive for a living and listen to podcasts. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I work at a commercial lawn and landscape company. I am currently the COO, and I'm wearing the HR manager hat can you simultaneously. Imagine? Can you imagine? I, I can clean this thing up. But anyway, that's what I do outside of YouTube. Raven Faust asks, and he we've, he was comment of the month one wow, time, right? Yeah. Congrats on three years of success. Do you guys see yourselves diving into music-related videos or sticking strictly to video games? We dabble with that kind of stuff, like in our desert islands and stuff. Yeah. But any time we don't do something that's video game-related, it does absolutely terrible. We just get dicks. Marked. And I know we don't do it for the views, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's kind of discouraging when you put something out it's yeah. like oh this is a passion project and it gets 50 views i i think somewhere down the line uh, robert and i always talk about keeping the main thing the main thing you know this was our plan we've worked our plan we're sticking to our plan yes it's been a slow process it's taken three years but now it's starting to get some momentum and that plan hasn't failed us so we probably won't deviate off of it too terribly much but at some point, we've got episode ideas, I think, on our spreadsheet about, like, you know, five unknown 90s alt songs that you need to listen to. Yep. We've got that stuff. The paint's on the canvas. Just a matter of when we're going to open that up. And it's just, I think we got to get to a certain size where it's like, yeah. oh, people actually want to hear us talk about this, you know? Django Bango asks, what's y'all's favorite arcade game of all time? And what's your favorite console accessories that are not light guns? So that's kind of two questions. It's a good wow. question, though, Django Bango. Arcade games? I love light gun games, um, House of the Dead. I love the Scarlet Dawn cabinet. That's pretty yeah. amazing. But then I really love um, Dr. Mario, the Dr. Mario arcade cabinet. And then I really love, like, Gradius and, like, Shmups, you know? Those are yeah. really fun in arcades. Um, I've always really enjoyed a uh, sports game in the arcade. Oh, um, like NFL Blitz NFL stuff? Blitz, but, like, some of my best memories. I, I remember I went to a friend's birthday party and we played the shit out of NBA Showtime. But I love throwing down on basically any type of four player sports cab whether that's blitz in an nba jam but i also love like your turtles in time your six player oh, x-men's your simpsons that's not answering a ton of questions but i try going towards games that i can't experience that way i just thought home. i just love another one that's one of my favorites it's at a local barcade actually and it's simpsons bowling yeah dude that's a good one. it's so much fun yeah um and then a favorite accessory that is not uh, a light gun wow um, I like like the fight sticks. Uh, we've got oh, a, yeah, a we couple, couple PS3 those. ones, and then uh, we've got the NES Advantage. I love playing shooters with that. The joystick, yeah. yeah. It just feels like an arcade, you know? That That's up there. Um, I mean, obviously, like the, the band accessories and things like that. Oh, um, yeah, Rock Band, Guitar Hero, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Easy going game. It says, the future of gaming versus gaming's past. You only have one. Well, what would you choose? I think that's an easy one. Retro. Yeah, I think I think there's so much retro stuff. Like, there's a lot of new stuff that comes out that first off I don't even know about it, and second off I'm like, ah, I'll maybe play it eventually because day one it comes out it's not playable usually, you know. And yeah. There's so much retro stuff I haven't even played. Yep, I'm in the same boat. Even if I have played it, I'm. I mean, anything you see behind us is all I would ever need. Yep. Um, and we would talk a lot. I can never get bored. I've never been a person that's like, oh, what am I gonna do tonight? If I don't have something planned, I got a ton of shit to get done. Um. So I, I would stick in the retro. Yeah, retro, I think. You all can only own, this comes from Knights 1980, one House of the Dead machine. What would you choose? Oh, machine? Yeah. Maybe two. Or yeah. Scarlet Dawn. Two is my favorite game in the series, but because of the unique experience, I would pick Scarlet Dawn. Yeah, because it's a sit-in cap, and it's awesome. Yeah, air in your face, rumbling it rumbles. Seat. Uh, it's just kind of that full-on immersive experience. Um, that's where I would go. 
Um, what's your favorite WWF match from the Attitude Era? I mean, do you consider WrestleMania 13 Attitude Era? I think it's kind of pre-Attitude Era, but one of my favorite matches ever is Stone Cold vs. Brown. Yeah, that's one of my favorite matches ever. That's one of my favorite Wrestle Mo WrestleMania moments ever. Yeah. That's amazing. That one's really good. Um, you know, I like a lot of Mick Foley stuff, that Hell in the Cell with Undertaker. That's pretty damn good. I mean, I, I do really enjoy, I don't know if it's Attitude Era, but like Stone Cold versus The Rock and all that stuff. Yeah, so that was, I, is that Attitude? I mean, I think it's like, Right, it was kind it's of the, so close. It was kind of like that the pre. Yeah, era. no, it was post. Oh, post. Yeah, it was like right as they were moving out of it. That's a good match, though. It is. Yeah, and uh, Rock like tells him like thank you type of thing at the end. That's really cool. Jordan Peters says, "What has been the most meaningful video you guys have done individually or collectively that you've made on your way to 12K?" Thank you for the question, Jordan. Meaningful video. Yeah, I'm trying to think. That's a good one. You got me kind of uh, really going through the Rolodex here right now. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of like the the hunting videos we've started oh, doing. Yeah, Just, I, I know it's not a specific video, but I like showing people like value and how you can get out there and hustle. And like if shit hit the fan tomorrow and you lost your job you can and still... you can't figure out how to make money, that's a you problem. Like it's out there for the taking. Uh, those I, I like. I like when we did the making of a God G video. Oh, that one was really fun. That one Even was super fun. It, it didn't, didn't do perform very well. well, but I, I just think that hopefully maybe some small channel out there was like, oh wow, you don't need all this crazy shit to start a YouTube channel. I need some fucking iPhone and a piece of shit mic and <laughs> I can get started. Um, not that it's the best way to do it, but there is a way to do it. Um, I like those a lot. First video, you know, even though it's dog shit. Oh, the first just, video's rough. I was just trying to get the plane off the runway. I really like... Like, every time we go to conventions and then we do a recap video of the conventions, just because it's memories and we show a lot of B-roll of hanging out with our friends and stuff, that's always fun, because yeah. it's like, oh, I remember that moment, dude, that's so funny. Woo! <laughs> oh <my>. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always fun, because um, it's always locked there, you know, that memory. You can go back and kind of revisit it. Um, are there any games you guys think and know you guys won't ever play again, but you like the cover art? I can't think of any. You know, cover art's like one of the last things on the priority list. If we don't like a game, we get rid of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't have an answer for that one. I don't have an answer either. Um, That's kind of a disappointing, disappointing yeah. answer. But, I mean, we play what we play. Yeah, Midwest Media Show. What's the biggest do's and don'ts that you've learned over the last three years doing YouTube? I think just consistency. Yeah. Consistency, always trying to improve, and just have a plan, you know? it's YouTube's all about numbers. Yep. That's, I think that's just basically it. Yeah. Just I, be consistent. I guess I, I only experience I have really is the do's, because um, we just do, 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 do. Um, there's not a lot of things along the way, um, you know, that we've we've done that I regret doing. Now, I wish we would have maybe been a little more prepared when we started, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah, and, and then you learn as you go. Have a plan. Know what you're going to do. Know who you are. Now, you know, our channel's evolved over time, but we're still doing kind of what our plan was. We're still working our plan plan ahead don't just sit down and be like what am i going to film tonight yeah have i, know have I have a to do something be a part of the community be as positive as you can um we've never went down the rabbit hole we've had people make videos about us saying stupid shit lies post pictures of us fucking each other on, <laughs> on social media all the stupid stuff and we've never went down that road um people like that they're, they're just trying to you know get negativity stirred up and we've never went there um yeah, I don't know if that really answers the question, but... Uh, just do. Yeah. Just do. Just do it. Yeah. Uh, Dave's Tech Room says, three years and you're only at 11.9k subs. Sheesh. Yeah, we suck, man. <laughs> we suck, Dave's Tech Room. Sorry, brother. We're, we're trying. We just keep pissing into the wind, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. What's your guys' favorite beer of all time? We'd love to see a top five or ten from both. Um, happy wow. three years. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Salozman29. Favorite beer of all time. I really like King Sue or, or Pseudo Sue by Toppling Goliath. Mm -hmm. um, I've really been digging those pastry sours from Barntown. Those are really good. Yeah. And then it's it's a cheap beer, but Miller High Life, man. Yeah. It's just it's just a good cheap that's, option. That's the gift that just keeps on giving. Yeah. The champagne of beers. I really like the first beer we ever did on the channel, uh, La Fin de Mon by Ooh. Unibrew. We've done it two or three times yeah. on the channel. Really like that one. We've had a lot of good beers. Yeah, yeah, we've been spoiled for sure. Dave Tech Room with another question. Any must-play PS4 or PS3, Xbox 360 games I should check out? By the way, I've been a fan for a while now, and I'm really enjoying the content. Any tips to grow a YouTube channel? So a lot of, a lot of going on here. Must-play PS4 or PS3, Xbox 360 titles you should check out. Next Machina, or Next Machina awesome. on the PS4. Yep. That's an amazing twin-stick shooter. Um, 
360 is just so versatile because it can play a ton of uh, X original Xbox yeah. games. That's where I put most of the miles on our 360. Uh, PS3, I mean, Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, yes. You've got all those HD collections, whether it's Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank. I think Sly Cooper is on there. Um, Jack and Daxter collection, the Kill Zone collection. Um, those are all great values. Um, there's also the Metal Gear Solid, like, collection, and then the war, the HD collection, whatever. There's a couple of those. But PS4, Hidden Gems, I would say Next, next Machina. Next Machina, yeah. which we've talked about a lot on the channel. It's it's amazing. Lots of good shooters, too. Raiden 5, Ooh, or yeah. Type Final 2, which just came out, by the way. Any tips on how to grow a YouTube channel? Man, you know... Just consistency. We're not even that big. Uh, so, I don't know that you want to follow our tips, but consistency. We've never missed an upload in three years. Um, up until, I'd say, most of the three-year run, we never missed a comment. Yeah. Like... And it's a fucking grind. Like, 8 to 10 hours a week just hitting comments back. It's getting so hard now. Um, it is. It's gotten crazy over the last couple months. But I think you got to commit to it. We're also very self-critical. Yep. When we watch our videos back, um, we always just kind of bust each other's balls. Like, I didn't even know we need to do that. Or, man, you say that a lot. Like, let's or, work on this. Yeah, or um, let's uh, repunch that. Yeah. Or, um, I think you got to be your own worst critic and, and uh, try watching it back. And if... if it's weird because you're watching yourself, but if you're not mildly entertained watching yourself, nobody else is going to give a yeah. fuck, right? So if you don't have stuff in there, at least for us, I know when we watch a video back, if there's not something that makes us laugh, <laughs> or that we're like, ah, oh, dude, that was a good point. It's probably not going to land very well. Um, so be very self-critical, be consistent. And uh, just keep putting out the best videos you possibly can, whether that be increasing your lighting, working your way towards a better camera, towards a better microphone, all those type of things would be yeah, I think advice. Yeah. Texas Joe Hot Dog 69 Ooh, nice. says, my question is, what has been your favorite miniseries to do or film for the past three years? I think it's the Madness series, hands down. Yeah. Because um, we're on season two of that now, which is so much fun. I also really like our Desert Island series. Um, we don't do a lot of miniseries, but I love those those two. Even though I've lost, and it's a small series because there are only two entries. Ooh. Beard versus Beard. That's a series like who the who else is doing that type of shit on YouTube? It never performs well. But like I, I'm just proud of that. Like yeah. and we've stayed committed to it. And there's a beard lot of skin in the game versus Beard. God, that's fun. With our schedule, somebody has to film looking like an asshole, you know, afterwards. So th that's always a fun one. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. Uh, Richard Mincy says, Hootie and the Blowfish or Dave Matthews Band? Honestly, I don't know that much about either one of them. I like some of the, I like songs from both of them. Yeah. But if I have to choose... I don't want to be with you! I think I, I, think I might lean Dave Matthews. Yeah, I would too. Dave Matthews Band all the yeah. way, for sure. Um, not not epic fans of either one, but I would go with DMB. Ethan H says, do you guys play handhelds? Also, what's your opinion on modding? We Ooh. have some handhelds. I dabble a little bit sometimes before bed, 3DS, PlayStation Vita, uh, PSP. Does the Switch count as a handheld? I mean, it's a hybrid. I'd say it's both. So I, I put the Switch the most handheld, um, which is not that much. Um, I, I grew up playing handheld a lot, like Game Boy, Game Boy mm -hmm. Advance, Game Boy Color. I had every single one of them. But I just don't handheld game anymore. Yeah, I... It, it, it's just not as good as playing, you know, and I, and I don't have a lot of situations where I need to play on the go, and anymore, my time on the go is spent, like, on my phone, hitting yeah. back comments and things like that, which that takes up that time. <sighs> They're okay. How do we feel about modding? We're all for it. Yeah. It's just, all we care about is if you can get your hands on to play the games. Yeah. No matter how you do it. If you mod it, if you have original hardware, obviously we prefer original hardware. Yep. But if that's the, if the only option you have is modding, Go ahead. Yep. You, as long as you're playing the games. Yeah, and having fun with it. We're, we're not... Uh, I, the only thing I do get a little... If I want to perfect a game, I yeah. get really picky and I want to play the original shit because I don't want any lag. You know, I still have not had anyone show me an emulated version of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out where they can regularly knock Mike Tyson on his ass. So, I prefer the OG stuff, but I'm all about modding. Have yeah. at it. It's, it's whatever you want. Yeah. Um, one wise Dre says, when's the wedding planning? Nice one. Good That's joke, funny. buddy. And I know there's a, some other ones in here, but people leave comments all the time asking if we're gay, we're not gay. So good question. They always say, no offense, and, but are you a couple? Yeah, and if we were, who would give a fuck? But we're totally <laughs> not. And, uh, I'm sure Robert could get somebody far better looking than me if, if we were. Yeah, it's his um, beard, dude. 
but the internet's full of funny people. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it makes me laugh. Um, Alex sixty four gaming says, "Do you guys watch anime? If so, what's your favorite show or film?" I I really I don't. Don't really. Yeah. I just started watching Avatar. Uh, if that counts as anime, which is Avatar is really good. Yeah, it's I'm enjoying it a lot. But other than that, not really. Yeah. My brother's way into it, um, so I know a little bit about it, like what's cool and, and, and all that from him, but I've never really got into it. Mega Man 21, if you could only have one and not the other, would it be video games or beer? Video games. Video games. Not even yeah. close. Yeah. yeah, video games. This is just kind of a it's just, fun it's just, thing to it's do just while fun you to play do. video yeah, games. Yeah, while you do, and sometimes but, we don't even drink beer while we're playing video yeah. games, you know? Well, especially if we're playing something hard. Yeah, like really hard. Yeah, yeah, we try being laser dialed in uh, what city are you guys from how did you guys meet how old are you guys uh we already talked about how we met before so we'll kind of skip that piece this is from thug mouth ronnie we're nice from name. des moines iowa des moines iowa baby corn i'm 34 26. born in 1986 26 94 baby. yeah so good question <clears throat> um will ps5 and xbox series x be the last physical game players i mean they already are getting rid of disc drives so you know, it's I, hard. It's hard to say they'll be the last um, in that respective realm of PS5 and Xbox, maybe. But I, I think Nintendo will keep it alive. You know, you think about the Switch; it's still going to be highly collectible. Yes, there's online updates and everything, but for the most part, everything can run. Yeah. Day one. Yeah. There may be some alterations down the line you could miss out on. But maybe for those consoles, time will tell. Which is kind of scary. Ethan Fisky says, been a fan of Got G since I first discovered wow. you guys a half year ago. Thank you so much. Always have killer content. My question is, what advice would you guys give yourself about the channel if you could go back three years? And what advice would you give to upcoming YouTube creators? I think we've already kind of mentioned this. Just We have. Well, I don't, if we went back and told ourselves, maybe just be. <laughs> settle down. Settle down. Because first off, we started off with no energy. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, we got energy. And then we were yelling. Yeah. Um, so maybe just be yourself. I mean, some of that though, like you kind of got to, you know, you kind of got to shit your pants a few times to like to realize, realize that you don't like the way yeah. it feels. Yeah. And even though it's warm, and it's just on a cold day, dude. Mm. It's, ooh, it's like pudding. Yeah. Pudding. Um, you know, there's an element to just just starting and kind of learning on the fly. You know, um, you know, it's one of those things. If you if you're brave enough to jump into the ocean, out at the deep part, deep into the pool. You better have the fucking nads to fucking swim back. Yeah. You know, and, and I feel and like... You're going to have to. Yeah, you're going to have to, or you're going to freaking, you know, flounder. So, you know, honestly, looking back on it, do I wish we would have been more prepared? Do I wish we would have made better early videos? Absolutely. But... But I don't regret. No, you got you to start somewhere. Yep, for sure. Uh, this is from Brian Newland, good friend of the channel. You guys have probably seen him on the channel before. A uh, really good friend of ours. Uh, what's one Holy Grail game, console, accessory that you want... If price didn't matter, congrats on three years. Been a heck of a ride. Can't wait to see what the future holds. We can't Holy either. We don't even know what tomorrow holds. Holy grail. Game, Power Blade 2. Power Blade 2, which we're probably going to get this year. Um, I do really want that black Dreamcast. Yes, um, yep. The Sega Sports Dreamcast. Punisher on Sega Ooh, Genesis. Punisher on Sega Genesis. Ah, I'm trying to think of anything else we've been talking about lately that we were like, dude, we got to get that. Like a sealed copy of Punch Out? Yeah, I do want to get a CIB. It doesn't have to be sealed, but I want a CIB, CIB. copy to punch out. Yeah, that would be really cool. I would love to get the two Saturn light guns and House of the Dead 1. Oh, yeah. Um, but we don't really have huge ones, I yeah, don't think. You yeah, know? I mean, it's all stuff, you know, with, with what we make hunting, we could get on right now and grab it. It's just kind of the thrill of the hunt. Um, it's it's kind of no fun to just get on, if, just because we're flipping stuff and have the, the money to do it. Just, to, just get just on the it. Hey, I just bought everything. It's yeah. more meaningful when we find it in the wild. Yeah, you know? or at a convention or something, yeah. you know. Um, for a console, um, man, I, I, I you just found one, actually, Brian, but uh, I always have thought it would be cool to uh, find a TurboGrafx-16. That'd be really cool. And I've always wanted to trick out my Model 1 Sega Genesis and get the Sega CD... And the 32X. And the 32X. Yeah, that'd be really cool, just to have the whole Transformer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not go crazy. I would probably only get three or four games for each, respectively, like the ones that I really wanted. Um... But yeah, that's that's kind of what's your favorite game from each big console publisher: Nintendo, PlayStation, Sega, etc. That's wow. a tough one, that's man. Such it, a tough one. It really kind of goes. Along. What's your favorite Nintendo game ever that you can think of? Uh, probably Mario. It's the Mario series. Doctor I mean, Mario. Mike Tyson's Punch Out for me. Favorite PlayStation series. I know it kind of branched off, but I still consider it PlayStation is Metal Gear Solid. Um, Xbox. I'm still trying to think of PlayStation. Oh yeah, duh. Last of Us, yeah, for PlayStation, Xbox, 
Gears of War, maybe? Yeah, I'm going to go there, too, because I love the co-op aspect yeah, of that. Yeah, Halo's sweet, too, but I think I like Gears of War better. And Sega, probably House of the Dead. That's that's up there. Um, Jet Grind Radio. That was going to be the one I was going to say. Um, kind of loose there, but uh, yeah. Where'd you get that sweet Castlevania poster? That and that Mike Tyson's Punch-Out poster, that uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors poster, and that Turtles in Time poster were the first four things in this game room before anything came in. And I just did a Google search of video game box art posters. And I ordered them all from the same place. I think it took me to an eBay-ish thing. Maybe it was Amazon. Um, and you just framed them. And the quality's pretty dang good. Yeah, and I just look... bought cheap-ass, like, $8.99 or $10 frames from Walmart. So They look really cool. Yeah. That's where we got it. Heat5201 says, how big is it? How we'll big we'll is maybe it? cover that one a little bit later. <laughs> how much time do you actually get to play games? Clifford Easley. This is a good one. We do get comments from uh, people from time to time, like, oh, do you even fucking play video games? Um, you you know, know, we have to make time. Uh, we have to make time. We, we try having one. We have our live stream every single week where we get to play a game together for a couple hours. Um, I play games like most people watch TV, so I don't waste time binge watching stuff on TV because if I have any time, I try playing games. Whether it be something that doesn't matter for the channel. MLB The Show. MLB The Show, my franchise, which is MLB The Show 08. Just so you guys know, I'm the Milwaukee Brewers and my team's fucking badass, so don't even say anything about it. Um, He's always playing. But yeah, you just got you got to make time. I mean, right now, we've probably collectively put you know five to ten hours into Contra Hardcore on the Genesis, yep. um, but we, we play games more than you would think. It's actually surprising to me how many games we beat every year together. Given based, based on everything else that's going on, yeah. Yeah. Um, I asked this on Retro Rivals channel. This is Gernaldinho Plays. Gernaldinho. But I'd love to ask you guys, as you're big into music, if you could have a new Guitar Hero game made with band sp made band specifically that hasn't already been done, what would you pick and why? <sighs> Local H? I think Local H would be badass. Yeah. Because they have so many albums and... Ah, that, that's... Local H would be cool. Yeah. Um, I think a Pixies rock band or guitar ooh, would be sweet. That would be really cool. Just because the dynamic of their music, you got great lead work, great drum work, great vocal work, great bass lines. Two vocalists with Kim, you know, and, and Frank Black Francis, Frank Black, whatever he's going by these days. <laughs> um, I think that one would be that really one cool. would be really sweet. Yeah, Frank Grimes. What game have you guys sunk the most time into? I think the Metal Gear Solid series, just in general, yeah. for me. Um, and you said Borderlands. Borderlands yeah. yeah. Horace asks, when is Robert going to play a Zelda game? Keep up the grind, brothers. I've dabbled. Uh, I think the most time I've spent with a Zelda game has been Zelda Four Swords. Yeah. yeah. Which was cool because we did it on with the GameCube and the Game Boy Advances and four player. We actually talked last night about jumping into Link's Awakening. Oh yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, but uh, uh, eventually, eventually. He'll get there. I think when he gets his hands on Breath of the Wild, he'll disappear for a while. What's your favorite console? Oh man. Email jam. I think if launch, um, or Console Manus says anything, it's the PS2. Yeah, I think that's up there for sure. Um, I find myself playing the PS2 and the NES the most out of yeah. any console. And that, that was the finalist yeah. in our console madness. Yeah. So. Yeah, PS2 or NES, because I just got an NES in my house. Yeah. yeah. I've only seen a couple of your videos. This is Zayman Thatcher, but I like your content. Well, thank you. In one of your videos, you said you're part of a band. What instruments do you play? What genre of music? Uh, so the band is Hazer. Yep. I sing and play rhythm guitar. I'm a bass player. Yeah. And actually, fun fact. The intro music for every episode is us. Yeah. So. Um, and I'd say we're like, just like a... Alt rock. Dirty alt rock, yeah. Kind of grungy. The vultures are slowly closing in. Your mother always told you. Your mother always told you. Well, mommy tried to save you. Mommy tried to save you. One, two. 
what's the future for the show and do you hope y'all's kids take over <laughs> uh what do you hope happens to y'all's game collection when the good lord comes um when the good lord comes hey <laughs> we don't have kids future of the show we're gonna keep doing what we do and just let it evolve naturally try not try not holding it down and try not like be... just going crazy with it I think it, it it will be the same, similar. You yeah. know, we're just sitting around talking, kind of yeah. like a talk show podcast. You yeah. know, it's, I just what are we gonna do with the games? Um, I hope they go to somebody who cares, um, that wants the games. Uh, well, maybe our good Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, will take them. Yeah, take them with and, us. And he can play. <laughs> but uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, <laughs> Latter Day Saints. Saints. <laughs> um, but uh, I think. <laughs> I, I like if, if something happened to me tomorrow and I got hit by a Mack truck, I would hope my good friends would just come pillage the game room and take what means something to them. And I would, leave. I would lock the door. Leave and behind keep them yeah. myself. Um, yeah, I just hope they don't go to people that just want to sell them or or something like that. Um, or if they are selling them, they use them to buy video games that they want. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. It says Wes, if you finish your garage to prevent all the extreme cold, heat, moisture, blah blah blah, getting into the electronics. And Robert, how does it feel being born? in the same year that Dumb and Dumber was released. So my garage doesn't have a major issue, I don't feel like, because it's attached to my basement, which my basement is heated, yep. my garage is finished, and it's insulated. It does get cold. It does get a little cold but. in there, but it's not uh, It's not like it's a detached garage. It's actually got a, it's bordered on two of the walls by the, the, the house. The house. Yeah. yeah, so the consoles down there are kind of the island of misfit toys. Like, yep, it's they're, just completely backups they, they look some of them look rough yeah but, like they, the, but they play great the ps2 slims like just looks like somebody played street hockey with it but it works um, it works great and, and then yeah um i feel like i was born in the perfect year because basically all my inspiration comes from things that came out in 94 so i feel like everything just came together and made me does that make sense so are you like trying to say jim carrey's your dad kind of well if he's any, part of if it. anything he's he's my papa <laughs> Okay, we gotta move on. This is going downhill fast. Um, Saiyan Legend, top five to ten games of all time. Let's do top five, rapid fire, not thinking about it. Start. Borderlands 2. Okay. Portal 2. Uh, Dr. Mario. Oh, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> this is tough. Probably the original Mario Bros. And then, wow, I'm missing so many. Maybe Smash Bros on the Switch. Okay. Um, I, I'm like blanking on games. Number one for me is Metal Gear Solid 3. Number two is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Number three is Super Mario Brothers 3. Number four is, insert Contra name here right now. Oh, I didn't even think of a Contra. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say Contra 3, The Alien Wars. And number five, video game of all time. Just because I've spent so much time in the franchise, I just got to go with a generalized answer and say Madden. I thought you were going to say, and it'll be the show of eight. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> see, see I'm how hard an it is. NHL hits O2. I'm gonna oh, replace see, Madden with an NHL hits O2. There's so many games I've yep. forgotten about. But I do, man. I've spent a lot of time in Madden. Do you guys each have your own collection or share one? Both. Both. This is a shared collection. Yeah. But then I have a small collection at home. Yeah. So we put stuff in here mostly that is like the retro-related stuff. Kind of pack out the shelf, and because we play a lot of that stuff together. You've got your own PS4, PS4 games at collection. Home. I just started an NES collection. Yeah. I have a small PS2 collection. Yeah. Yeah, and you know. Your NES, you're kind of getting dingers for it because you've got NES yeah, games I got over it, so here I as well. If I want yeah, to Pig18, if you could bring back one character or franchise, what would you resurrect? Happy YouTube anniversary and sweet N64 app. Thank you, Pig18. I'd bring back Mike Tyson's punch out. I think it'd be awesome for him and Nintendo to get back together. And and, and beat the shit out of Mr. Dream. Yeah. How cool would that be? That'd be sweet. Um, I think I'm going to go with my answer from the old one. Uh, Twist of Metal. I think that, yeah. needs, to, that needs to be resurrected. Yeah. Steve Hale, uh, knowing that y'all sell a lot of games, how do you determine when a game in your collection becomes valuable enough to sell? Do you have games that are off limits? What are those guidelines? We only really keep the games that we play. Yeah. Um, that's why our collection is so small. Definitely when we go out and game hunt, we sell more than we keep. Um, it's very few and far between that we take something out of the game room to sell it. Yeah. Um, once it's in here, but we're very selective on the front bring, side of what comes yeah. in. Not saying we wouldn't. Like the other day, we were talking about uh, Def Jam uh, Fight for New York on OG Xbox. We've got a mint, mint copy, and that game is approaching like the 125 range. So if like we were hell bent on getting like Power Blade 2 or something, we'd probably pick out a couple things like that. Um, 
but yeah, I, I'd say we're more selective just on the front side so that everything in here isn't stuff that we would probably sell. Yeah. Unless it went crazy. Joaquin Paradis uh, says, what do you think is the best game for you two even to this day? Like, So let's say co-op. Well, co I mean... Game. It's just nostalgia, or not maybe not nostalgia since we've only been doing it for three years, but House of Dead Overkill. Yeah, so it's co op. It's a light gun game. It's a light gun game. And it's got that stupid grindhouse type of sense of humor. It's so that, like, terrible. Yeah, but we love that type of stuff. So it just checks all those boxes. Oh, this is a good one, Captain Frugal. If you had to choose between the channel and the band, what would you keep? Oh, I love music like so much, but I'd probably say the channel. Um, at this point in my yeah, life. Yeah, at this point right now. But if you would have asked me. Two years ago, I probably was at the band. Yeah, um, but I it, mean, it's it's a weird time because we're coming out of the pandemic. But right now, I feel like the most opportunity resides with, with the, the channel. channel. Yep. So I would probably say the channel. Don't want to have to make that pick, but if I had to, that's probably the way I would go. What's your favorite movie of all time? Jackson Edwardson. Wow. Asks. I think Five Hundred Days of Summer. Okay. I think that's my favorite. I've seen it a bazillion times. I mean, it, this is one that I get ripped apart about because I say it, but it's Home Alone. I just love Home I always Alone. forget about that movie. Yes. That's definitely in my top ten yeah. for sure. Favorite all-time NES game? Mike Tyson's punch Dr. Mario. Jackal. Pretty easy stuff there. <laughs> Dr. Mario Jackal. <laughs> what are some of your favorite foods to eat while gaming or any time in general? <sighs> Man, I don't know. I'm not much of a foodie. I eat to survive. I, I like good food. Yeah. But I don't pursue good food. Uh, I just like munching on shit while yeah. I'm gaming. You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? No. Or drinking beer. I mean, I, I like I like almonds. Um, you know, those are like a good type of snack. I like Cliff Bars. Cliff, just cause, I eat a lot of Cliff Bars. Yeah. Um, good protein bar. Um, I do like like boneless wings and stuff. I mean, there all sorts of shit. I mean, we've like a McDouble. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good at that question. Um, what video are you guys most proud of? You guys just have so many quality videos to choose from. Most proud of? I mean, I think I'm proud of all of them. Is that like a cop-out answer? Mm-hmm. But like we literally, we don't put something out unless we're proud of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's my answer. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I I think the the thing we did and it actually ended up on Do Your Nerds channel, but where your head got cut off. Oh yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. That was Look, just really cool. Looking back, I'm like, ah, oh, we could have done that effect better, but we did what we could in the time. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was awesome. that was fun. I literally got my head decapitated. If you could have a beer with any character from a video game, who would it be? This Snake. is another, this is another cop out with Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> well, he's, he's, in, a video, he's yeah. in a video game. Okay, that's a better answer See. than mine, but I would say Snake. But then Stone Cold. He'd go Miller. Yeah, I guess friends, brother, or couple. Okay, here comes the gay questions again. Uh, we're just good friends, not brothers. Uh, brothers from different mothers, maybe. Um, but yeah. I'm wondering how many more times in our time as a channel we'll get asked if we're gay. Probably a lot more. Like, do you remember that uh, that guy that commented a couple weeks ago that said the sexual tension in this video is just unbelievable? <laughs> like, uh, you're like, whoa, dude, you're on the wrong yeah. internet thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, buddy, good one. Ooh. Um, favorite live show you guys have been to, either that you opened for and played at, or that you were in the pit for? Ah, uh, I, I really love that local edge helmet show in Chicago. Chicago that was good that was an awesome I chipped my tooth in the pit that was yeah. that was awesome but then I really love um, the first sold out show I ever played was for Bad Flower and yeah. that was just an amazing night and yeah, we opened um, for them that yeah was which awesome. was we're direct support I think direct we? support yeah. first sold out show that I played at one of my favorite clubs in Des Moines Woolies it was awesome um, yeah our, our sold out shows that were that summer <laughs> do you remember who the other band was yeah Pop Evil and then Buck Cherry <laughs> which <laughs> A lot of people are like, damn, those are huge fans. But for us, it's like, who gives a shit? We do. Bad Flyer was awesome. But if you put on per, the, the, the Spectrum, you, yeah, dude, we played the solo show with Bad, Bad Flyer, and then you're like, yeah, we also played with him. She's a crazy bitch. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that was, I remembered that show. Dude, he's the worst live singer I've ever heard. And I, I remember at one point he goes, all right, the next song, this one is our Purple Rain. And it was, they played like some songs. It was so bad. I was laughing the entire time. It was horrible. Uh, my favorite show I ever went to would have been, ah, brain, brain work, 07 or 08, when the Toadies reunited the for Texas the very tour. first time. And they only played in Texas. They played four shows. The first night was at Stubbs Barbecue. I don't know if anybody's been there, but they've got an open, like, muddy pit in the back, and it had rained a lot that day. But uh, my best memory from that show is uh, crowd surfing all the way from 
the back of the the crowd all the way to the front during the song I Burn, and everybody was holding up lighters, and I was just going across, and there was fire all around me, and I kept getting like burned. That's got a, such a surreal moment. That gives me goosebumps. Yeah, it, even it was about. it was so amazing, and I literally at that moment was like, dude, if I catch on fire to this song, this will be one badass way to go down. Yep, and I'm here for it. I'll never forget that moment. That's freaking awesome. That was amazing. And I burn. What a badass song. Uh, what's your favorite part of having a gaming channel? Brandon Fields asks. I think just the people. We've met some really freaking cool people. Um, other YouTubers, fans, etc. It's just the community. The yeah. Community. Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, we didn't, I, I don't think, forecasted that the amount of friends and stuff. Yeah, when you start a YouTube channel, you don't realize that yeah. you're becoming part of like a family, you yeah. know, a community. Yeah, so it's been pretty fantastic. Lassie ST, why is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 better than Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4? Give me your hot takes. The hot take is because I spent the most time with it. Yeah. Um, I, I like, 4 is good, but... I like how three is just the traditional format because four, you know, you can get off your board and it's and it's it's not just the two minutes. Yeah. And three is like the perfection of one and two, if that makes sense. And I love that just two minutes, get in, get out. Yeah. How many CRTs do we have? One at your place, one in the living room, one in my bedroom, two in here, two on display in the garage with two sides, and then we've got a stack of three for when we do land parties. Yeah. So we're well over ten. Well over double yeah. digits. And they're all pretty bad. We have a as problem. Well. Have you ever had a LAN party session using consoles to play a giant multiplayer match? Oh, hell yeah. We try doing it quarterly. We've got a group of friends that we throw down, usually on Halo 3, on it's, Xbox 360. And it's freaking, it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Turbo says, if you had a chance to create your own video game, what type of game would it be and what consoles would you have it on? Also, what's the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> um... Uh, create your own video game. What type of game would it be? It would have to be a 16-bit game. If it was like the GOTG experience. I would love to be a part of the making of Portal 3. Yeah. Um, just because I love puzzle games and I think it'd be fun to come up with my own puzzles. Yeah. Um, but I think I'd be, I would be terrible at it. It'd be yeah. so hard. But probably a, I think it would be fun to do like a platformer. Or a... Yeah. How'd you guys start collecting VHS tapes? This comes from Jackson. Oh, and by the way, you guys are the reasons that I have VHS tapes. Oh, that's awesome, dude. VHS tapes are awesome. Um, I just, for me, it's nostalgic because I had them growing up, you know? Yeah. Well, and I, you know, when we set up the game room with CRT TVs, it was kind of the next, the next phase. Because the right VCR makes it really easy to pipe things to different TVs. Yeah. So we've got a Blu-ray player running into a VCR, which can then cast on both TVs. Um, simultaneously things like that and so it just made sense and vhs tapes are so freaking cheap oh and and it's it's just the fun of popping it in and watching it with the old commercials and stuff oh yeah yeah it's pretty pretty epic stuff neo turbo wants to know what games from arcade games from 79 to 84 that we really like so that's um, like early arcades early stuff um, i think I might have to go with, like, Galaga. Yeah, um, Donkey Kong jumps out to me, Pac-Man. I just played so much Galaga. It's, yeah. it's a fun, simple game. 19, I think 1942 came out in that era. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that I'm not thinking of. I'm sure there's tons, but that's just kind of what comes to mind. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little later than that, but our type, I think, was... Yeah, it was definitely after 84. But, uh... That'd be sweet. Yeah. That would have been sweet if it was in that pocket. Joshua Smiley asks, my question is, do you guys enjoy the Final Fantasy series at all? It seems like he, he does and has some nostalgia for it. The answer is, I've never played them. I've only ever played Final Fantasy on the Super Nintendo, and Final Fantasy VII I played the hell out of on PlayStation 1. And the reason is, is when I got my PlayStation 1 from my uncle, the only games I had was Disc 1 of Metal Gear Solid. Not even Disc 2? No, I had to get that from a friend. Yeah. And I had... Final Fantasy VII, both this. So, by default, those are two of my favorite PlayStation 1 games. Makes sense, because that's all you had. <laughs> that's why I had no other options, yeah. Um, I just don't know much about it. I know there's a, so many of mm -hmm. them, and I know they're sweet. Uh, just it gets to a point where it's kind of so daunting to jump in. Yeah. Um, if you could pick one character to add to Smash Brothers, who would it be? And I, it's got to be Mike Tyson, man. Get Mike Tyson in there. 8-bit Mike Tyson. This is such a dumb answer, but why do I want Tony Hawk? Dude, that'd be so sweet. He's like on his with board, him, with and, his then board and then you can hit people. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be so fun. Dude, it's getting ready to come out on the Switch, I think. Yeah, I the, think I heard the that. Remake. The remake. Yeah. It might not be out of the realm of possibilities. That'd be so funny. <laughs> it's freaking. Dude, if Mario, that happens. Mario versus Simon Belmont versus Tony Hawk. Dude, if that happens, you're going to go down as a genius because I bet you you're the first person who's ever said that on the internet. 
That'd be so awesome. Are you calling it now? I'm calling it. Dude. All right. He's calling a shot, just like Babe Ruth. Robert says Tony Hawk will be in Smash Bros. In Smash Bros. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, what games do you excel at, and what other games do you suck at playing? Also, I know you guys are big in the co-op games. What are your favorite games, though, to play that pitch you against each other? Um, Games we excel at. I, I really like puzzle games. Yep. Um, And shooters. I feel like I, I have, like, because it's the same type of, you just gotta, like, see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my answer. I'm really good at timing-based stuff. So the game that I feel like I'm the best at are the two games is the original Super Mario Brothers and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I've got those games so rhythmically down. I feel like I'm I'm okay at spaceship shooters, but I think you're better than I am. Like, typically, like, on our first runs. Because yeah. I'm going to memorize things, and you're, like, I'm just trying the to patterns. find the, yeah, yeah. the hole. Um, I've always been fairly good at first-person shooters. Um Genres that I suck at just because I don't have the patience is just RPGs. I just don't have the time. And I'm not anymore. very good at fighting games. Yeah, um, I'm not either. Um, other than Smash Bros, which, which I'm not which even good funny, at. Which is funny because if that goes into the next part of the question is the games that we like to play against each other is Smash Bros. Yeah. Because we both suck at fighting games, so it's fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to say it's fair because you always beat my ass, but yeah, it's fair. It's fair. Uh, Reagan Riggles. Long time follower of the channel. Number one, should the PlayStation 5 have backwards compatibility with PlayStation 1, 2, 3? Absolutely. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, why they aren't going there, and I think that's why, in my opinion, Microsoft seems like the more, or the Xbox, rather, seems like the console that we would maybe yeah. most want at this point in time. We're huge Sony fanboys. And question two, any tips for someone who has been on the platform for almost six years now? Man. Consistency. Yeah, just consistency and, and really working on quality. Um and doing the best you can to make every video better than the next. Um, and we still don't have it down. Nope. But that's what we aim to do. Not saying we do it. Um, but that's our goal. Yeah. Uh, Aquabeard, our boy Aquabeard, says, when will there be a garage tour? Ooh, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. We, last summer, we we just rigged everything up to switch boxes, so it's it's really sweet. It's coming along. Yeah. We haven't done much to it since then. No, it's just... It's just, we only really hang out there in the summertime, yeah. you know, because we can open the door and smoke cigars. Yeah. I'm going to mess this name up. Rank Kildino says, you're two of the hairiest looking three-year-olds I've ever met. Well, thank you. <laughs> you should be in the circus. But tell me this, what's your favorite stout and IPA? He's from Northern Ireland. Wow. So are you going to be ashamed when we don't say Guinness? <laughs> um, I'll let you take the stout question. Um, IPA, probably King Sue. Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, I would, I'd, I'll just go with you on that. As far as favorite stout I have ever had, you know, I'd have to go with like Fremont beers. Oh yeah, their their stouts are imperial stouts just are in incredible. General, it, I mean, I could be missing something, but I mean, we've had so many. We probably forgot about. Yeah, we've had so many amazing stouts. Yeah, I mean that three layer cake from from oh that uh, the the the, the tor was it the Taurus by Hoppin' Hoppin Frog. Frog. Oh, that my was up there. God. That's a very tough one. Um, also, are there any games that you just can't play half juiced? I, we're pretty good at playing when we're when we're fucking tossed. I mean, except for like contra and stuff, because then we're like, oh, we just our timing's off. And yeah, we're screwed. But I mean, I can I can even beat Mike Tyson after I'm ripped. So, anyways, as we have gotten through these comments, we are only through the first page, and we did a second post, and yeah. that has just as many comments as this. We didn't go into this thinking this was going to be a two-parter. No, we did not, but I think we're going to have to. This is part one of two of the Q&A. So let's talk about this beer. Wow. Thanks yes. so much for the questions. Yes, thank you guys so and much. we deserve this four-year Yes. Stuff. So this is by Barntown to celebrate their four-year anniversary yeah. to celebrate our three-year anniversary. So thank you so much, Barntown, for making this in honor of us. I really appreciate that. This is a uh, Imperial Pastry Stout brewed with vanilla sheet cake, vanilla beans, and cacao nibs aged in one year in Heaven Hill bourbon barrels. I'm guessing it comes in at double digits percentage-wise. Yeah, because it doesn't, doesn't say. say. Wow. It's just incredible. Yeah. It's just a barrel-aged stout that is uh, really creamy and sweet on the finish. It doesn't necessarily... I don't taste like any cake. But I do get like a sweet. I like, get the sweetness and like the chocolatey aspects. Yeah. Very good. It's very creamy, very smooth. It just yeah. this is delightful. This beer. is an amazing. This is like a dessert stout. This yeah. is so good. It's, <laughs> it's it's kind of rich too. It's divine. Rich mahogany. That's my porn name. <laughs> Richard <laughs> mahogany. <laughs> and then the hog part in you know, mahogany is all caps. Yeah, Richard he's, mahogany. He's hogging. He's, he's hogging hog out. Wild. He's hogging out. All right, guys. Anyway, again, this wasn't meant to be a two-parter, but it's going to be because I think we're like an hour schlong on filming. It'll be shorter than that when we edit it down. But hopefully, part one of two 
of the three-year anniversary Q&A is in the sack. And we appreciate all your questions and digging in there. And we'll be back for another round very soon. Yep. We appreciate you always tuning in and subscribing to the channel. See you next time right here on Gaming Off The Grid. You guys are the reasons that I have VHS tapes. Oh, that's awesome, dude. VHS, VHS, tapes, are, VHS tapes are awesome. Did we get it? I think we got it. Oh, yeah. Damn. One and done, nonstop. Yeah, it makes for some shitty bloopers, but you know what? I don't really give a rat's ass, and that's the bottom line. You want to walk out here with your stupid little haircut, your stupid little suit, and act like Stone Cold gives a damn? Uh-uh! Our love is like water. Oh, my God, dude. Walter. Mmm. Mm. Mm, mm. Oh man, the taste. Alright, that guy's rolling. Oh, such a refreshing taste. Mmm.